Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, my dear. As you know that we already discussed about chapter number one and lesson number three, that is about the plants. So we also discussed a couple of things about this lesson. After understanding and completing the first part of this lesson, now we move to on page number 49, where we learn we know about gymnosperms and angiosperms in detail. You know very well. We already uh, discussed about this in detail. What are gymnosperms and what are angiosperms? So you know very well. So after uh, understanding, I'm just going to give you a recap of both these two topics. Okay. For this now, I am going to share a link with you. So please, everyone the meeting open this link when you're going to open the window will pop up in front of you is this one so this window will pop up in front of you just a minute my dear i will let you to speak but first uh, let me to see this window will uh, pop up in front of you here you have the definitions of these two things. So there are two main types of seed plants. We know very well, gymnosperms and angiosperms. So what are the gymnosperms? Uh, gymnosperm is a seed plant that does not produce a flower. That we already discussed in detail and I also gave you the examples. After that, we learned about the angiosperms. What are these? And angiosperm is a seed plant that produces flowers. So here you know very well about the difference between these two plants and also you learn in detail about their examples. Come back to your textbook and we are today to start the lesson from page number here on 50. Okay, so that is page number 50. Everyone, please textbook page number 50. So from here today my dear students our first topic that is about root or what are roots you know very well so a plant in a plant you can see there are a uh, different structure for example if you're going to see a plant here the upper part where you can see that leaves and stems and under this one, you can see the under the ground, there are also few structures of the parts of the plants. We name them as roots. So what are roots and what's their function? Let's discuss them in detail. So please be careful and listen me carefully. Have you ever tried to dig up a plant? Yeah, I do this many times and hope you also done. If so, then you might have hit a maze of starting pot like roots. A root is a part of the plant that absorbs water and minerals, stores food and anchor the plant. So what the functions of the root? It's not only gives water, but it also absorb minerals, store food and anchor. Anchor means it's going to hold the plant in the soil. Okay, so the trees, a big tree like these all, they store not only, sorry, they not only absorb water, but they also store food and anchor the plant in the soil. So till here, if you have any question, Please raise your hand, otherwise type no in the chat. Everyone, my dear. Hurry up. Well done. Thank you, Muhammad. He is one of the students who is most active one here during the lesson. Well done, Umar. Okay. Yes, Salah. Saleh Ahmad. Yes, my dear. Why you raise your hand? I didn't understand the roots. Okay. You don't know. You ever, you ever dig a plant? Ever you... Ever you just uh, just dig a plant, for example, now I'm going to show you the diagram here. So you can see on page number 51, when you move on page 51, here you can see the roots. These are the different roots of the plants. They are in the soil mostly, okay? 
there are many types of roots okay now you understand okay that's great excellent well done well done okay now after understanding about the function of the roots let's see what's their other uh, role in the plant roots absorb water using fuzzy root hair a root hair is a thread like projection from a plant root each root hair is less than 1 mm mean to say the size 0.04 inch in length it means it's very small the root hairs are very very small but together they soak up moisture like a sponge but when they combine all they work like a sponge and they can absorb enough water like a sponge for a plant for a tree with the help of these tiny root hairs okay now a typical root of a vascular plant is made of three different layers so the layers we going to discuss about the anatomy of the root thank you very much welcome my dear and a root cap so the root cap is the tip of the root it protects the root tip while it pushes into the ground so what is a root cap now i am going to show you and you can easily understand what is this thing what is a root cap so please my dear students you concentrate on this diagram that's mentioned here on page number 50 this this part that one is the root cap here okay that present at the top or you can say that the tip of the root we name as root cap okay after this uh, the outer layer of the root is called epidermis okay the epidermis is the outer layer of the root here you can see this this layer this the outer layer here this one all we name as epidermis okay you know very well about that and these are the root hairs okay they are a small projection we already discussed about them we name them as root hairs okay and absorb water as root hairs and absorb water a cortex now where is cortex that part that part we name as cortex so a cortex layer is located just under the epidermis so that's the upper layer we name this epidermis under this you can see the cortex okay very easy yeah that's great excellent it is used to store food what the function of the cortex store food and nutrients for the plant the vascular system is located in the center of the root this one that the center of the root here you have vascular system or you can say that as a transport system in the root the vascular system transport water and minerals absorbed by the root hair uh, just a minute amaria sir yes my dear what's the question why you raise your hand amaria sir please you can unmute your mic teacher can i read no no i am going to explain today okay i will give you chance for reading but first i am explain okay thank you very much okay okay that's great okay after understanding till here about the internal and external parts of the roots different plants have different kinds of roots so different parts and different uh, types of the plants they have different kinds of roots some plants have specialized roots for their environment for example if a plant is present in water its root structure is different if a plant is present in a rock its structure is different if a plant is present in soil that is muddy or moisture or a dry soil its structure and its function is totally different from the other plants so let's see them one by one here uh, we first going to discuss about the aerial roots aerial roots are roots that never touch the ground aerial mean in the air okay 
So you can see here, these types of roots, they are uh, very easy to elaborate and understand these types of roots. Look, these roots are outside, okay? To the ground, not in the ground, not in the soil. So that's the reason we call them aerial root, okay? Very, but you can say that in the air. Okay, so they anchor the plant to tree, rocks, or other surface aerial roots absorb water from rain and the air rather than soil because they are not in the soil. So they just wait for rain and for other part of that touch them, they can just absorb water from them. Many have aerial roots, some live high up in the rainforest and are attached to tree bark, okay? So they just attack to different parts of the tree. Second type of the roots here, we have fibrous or fiber roots are thin, thin branching roots. They don't grow deep into the ground, but they often cover a very wide area. A single clump of grass has found to have some 600 kilometer or you can say that 319 miles of fibrous roots. So this is the example of the fibrous root. You can see how they are spread in the soil, in the ground, under the soil, but they are not, uh, uh, you can say that so hard or so strong, okay? They are little bit soft. Plant with tap roots have a single main stalk-like root that grows deep into the ground. Smaller side root often branch off a main tap root. Pine trees and plants that live in dry areas often have tap roots. So you can see here the type of the tap root that just a single, you can say that a stake-like structure and from them the fibrous root or the other branches are coming out. But next type is probe root, usually grow out at the bottom of a plant stem. They prop up and support the plant so it cannot be knocked over, okay? You can see here very easily. Corn plants and trees have prop roots. So these the examples of all the four types of root that just I explain you. So my dear students still here, if you have any question, please raise your hand. Otherwise type no in the chat. Everyone quickly. Well done, very nice, excellent. That's great. Very well done, okay. Okay, after understanding the types of roots, now we next move on page number 52 here, we're going to study about the stem. What are stems, okay? Each part of plant has a special function. The plant stems has two functions. First, it is a support structure, the stem of a tree, for example, must support the weight of the entire trees. Smaller plant stems support less weight, but most stems must be sport, leaves, flowers, and branches. So when you're going to see a plant in detail, you can find easily there are stem like this. So you have two types of stem. One is soft stem and second is woody stem. So we will discuss about both of them one by one. So you can see here soft and woody stem. That is the example of woody stem. And this is the example of soft stem. There are three components that present in them. Inshallah, in the next, uh, next page, we're going to discuss about all of them one by one. So first we're going to see stem can in two basic forms, soft stem and woody stem. Soft stem are not as strong as woody because as from their name, they are soft. They are soft, green, and can bend. Their green color shows that their cells have chlorophyll. Why their color is green? Due to the presence of 
chlorophyll what is a chlorophyll it is a pigment due to the chloroplast that is present in them because there a process going on we name as photosynthesis inshallah in the next section we will discuss about them shrubs and trees have woody stems woody stems are often covered with bark a tough outer covering that serves as a protective layer so that is the bark okay that is present outside woody stem don't contain chlorophyll because their color is not green you know very well if like uh leaves leaves are green you know so why because due to the presence of chlorophyll okay now here you have couple of uh things like the parts you can see here after understanding or discuss in detail about stem if you have any question please raise your hand otherwise type no then i move to the next part of the lesson hurry up quickly my dear any question till here if you have please raise your hand okay well done very nice excellent that's great thank you my dear thank you very much okay now after understand yes okay no page number 53 before to going and understand this page 53 my dear students i have a link for you so please everyone open this link because that will help you to understand about these three things that now we going to study so everyone please open this link when you going to open this link the will pop up in front of you is that one so first everyone open this link hurry up quickly you have one minute to read about these three components or part of the stem that we just saw in the diagram here i also prepare for you the blog that will help you to understand hurry up quickly just within 2 minutes everyone okay define zilum phloem and cambium what is zilum zilum is a series of tubes that move water and minerals you know very well here this one from down to the up tissues conduct in only one direction up from the plant roots to the leaf so that the example of the zilum where they are they are present in the plant but they work so water and minerals so look one way flow water moves up and also with minerals with the water they move up now second part that you know very well that is phloem phloem moves sugar that are made in the plants leaf to the other part of the plant so this is the structure of the here they are showing the direction in both way upward and downward it both up and down in plant from tissues is a two way transport route so it can move both sides up and down now the last part here that is the last uh, here in this blog and also from our lesson cambium what is this the slum and phloem layers in a plant stem are separated by a layer called the cambium what we call this cambium so where is this cambium you can say that that is the green color this is the green this is the cambium okay that going to separate these two layers okay yellow and blue so you can easily understand about them now please open your textbook page again 50 53 your textbook page please open here we going to discuss in detail about these uh, three parts or these three components or these three layers the stems second function is to serve as transport system for the plant 
the transport system actually begin in the roots of the plant two kinds of tissue make up the system xylem and phloem xylem is a series of tube that move water and minerals up the stem xylem tissue conducts or transport in only one direction up from the plant roots to the leaf so you know very well and you understand till here if you have any question please raise your hand otherwise type no in the chat hurry up now i want uh, this from everyone please the reply you know that mashallah you all excellent student you are understanding very well i know that so please i want the response from everyone that's great excellent my dear thank you very much talal suheb thank you very much okay after that uh, understanding zalam we move to the phloem moves sugar that are made in the plant's leaf to other parts of the plant phloem tissue is a two way transport routes it flows both up and down in plant in a carrot for example sugar are brought down from the leaf of the plant to the tap root through the phloem phloem also transport sugar up from one part of the plant to another so that is very easy you know very well here you also can see the xylem and phloem layer is in a plant stem are separated by a layer called cambium so that is the cambium that just i showed you xylem and phloem cells are produced in the cambium then move inward when they are alive in the cambium layer xylem cells are not able to transport water it is only after the cells die and become hollow that they are able to function as transport vessels okay just as tubes they are present in the cell of uh, of the parts of roots or stem or in the parts of the plant's body so they work as tubes or vessels okay so till here my dear students if you have any question please raise your hand just type no quickly hurry up well then very nice excellent mohammed thank you very much that's great now after that please my dear ali khali okay no he's the okay now uh, after that my dear students open your workbook page number 13 everyone so when you open your workbook page number 13 today's homework from number 5 number 6 and number 7 blank number 5 blank number 6 blank number 7 and then to move on page number 14 here you need to solve fill in the blank number 8 9 and 10 that is your today's homework so till here if you have any question or anything you want to ask please raise your hand i am feeling good if you have any question so inshallah i will try my best to give you a satisfactory answer